dodge this. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. Do you know what I'm talking about? The Matrix. Everyone who's seen The Matrix can recall at least one memorable action moment in their head. The impossible combination of bullet time slow motion and anti-gravity feats in a playground where the laws of physics become mere guidelines. The camera positioned in the best possible angle to capture every kick, punch and parry, cutting only at the opportune moment where we can really feel it. Cutting out just for those moments that make your heart stop. There might be guns. Lots of guns. Sorry. There might be guns, Lots of guns and helicopters and occasionally giant robot squids, but the meat and potatoes of the Matrix's action is all about one thing. Kung Fu. It's completely ridiculous, larger than life and has been parodied to death, but the action of the Matrix still succeeds at being an intense, balletic exhibition of Hollywood hand-to-hand -hand combat. The action of the Matrix has aged well, even if the specific kind of action the Matrix delivers is a bit of a time capsule in the Hollywood space. The action scene has proved to be one of the most elusive movie making experiences to successfully capture. The laundry list of bad action movies stand as proof of that. Not only do you need to make sure your characters are engaging, we need to care about who is being punched, and that the action drives the story, things can't just explode for the sake of it, well most of the time. You need to care about the space in which an action scene is taking place. It's not enough for it to be visually interesting, the geography needs to be clear. You need to know where everyone is positioned, where the dangers are, what the characters are fighting for, and even if you manage to get your actors to throw a punch that looks good enough, you need to make sure the audience will actually be able to see it. There's so much that could go wrong in an action scene. The Matrix is one of those few cinematic experiences where just about every single action scene, every single action moment, is a masterwork of action cinema. It hits all the right notes, it takes a lot of people to make a movie, and a stone cold classic like The Matrix would be nothing without the vision of the Wachowskis. It's an awesome story of revolution and self actualization imploring its viewers to wake up. But when it comes to the action of The Matrix, and the iconic hand to hand, foot to foot, uh, head to head fights, one Hong Kong choreographer and director made it what it is. His name is Yun Wu Ping. The son of martial arts actor Yun Su Tin, Wu Ping started his career as a Hong Kong action choreographer in the 70s. At the end of the decade, his first directorial feature, entitled Snake in the Eagle Shadow, kicked off a collaboration between Wu Ping and its star Jackie Chan across several movies. Former director of the Hong Kong International Film Festival, Roger Garcia, reflected on Wu Ping's debut and its influence in a chat with the South China Morning Post. This early Jackie Chan movie shows how his refreshing and genuine fighting and comedy skills revived the genre after a trough of films featuring Bruce Lee lookalikes which followed the master's death. Wu Ping and Jackie had started something, and it would only be a matter of time before Wu Ping's work across a multitude of Hong Kong actioners would get recognised on the other side of the world. Wu Ping was sceptical of Hollywood before he met the Wachowskis, but after the choreographer was tracked down and flown out to LA to meet with them, where they enthusiastically explained that they wanted to make a science fiction flavoured kung fu film, Wu Ping changed his mind. Humorously, Wu Ping tried several tactics to dissuade the Wachowskis initially. He asked for a truckload of cash to do the film for a start, which the Wachowskis had no problem agreeing to. He then said that he would only consider it if he had complete creative control and if he was allowed to train the actors in the martial arts they would be pretending to perform. Again, the Wachowskis gave no resistance to Wu Ping's demands. In actuality, the directors were already keen to let Wu Ping have a lot of free reign, presenting him with rough ideas for how they wanted each fight scene to go as a framework for the director to work his magic. It's clear that they knew exactly what they were getting if they were able to successfully snag the Hong Kong legend for their own project, and what fresh influences could be translated overseas. The Wachowskis said that they wanted to integrate Kung Fu with special effects, to combine a sci-fi movie with a Kung Fu movie. That struck me as an innovative idea and a way to do something new, so I thought I would give it a try. I'm glad I did, as it really worked. The Wachowskis wanted action that would fit the script. Luckily for them, Wu Ping was someone who always sought out the right scripts to fit the action. When preparing for the fight choreography, the first thing I have to think about is what fits in the script. Whatever goes along with the storyline and the character's personality, they have to be matched. 
Today in Hollywood, it's common practice to train actors in martial arts for an action movie. The superhero genre is no stranger to sending thespians through six-month crash courses where they simultaneously bulk up to look the part and learn a variety of fighting techniques. Back in the 90s, this wasn't so common. Wu Ping was used to Hong Kong stars having some basic proficiency, but for The Matrix, he had to take Keanu Reeves, Carrie Anne Moss, Lawrence Fishburne, and Hugo Weaving from Kung Fu noobs to Kung Fu, well, not quite experts, of course. They only had around four months to prep before shooting began. But according to Reeves, Ping was chiefly concerned with developing a style for each actor that would help to sell the idea they've been doing this for far longer than in reality. The guiding principle is pretty simple. Focus on a performer's strength and avoid their weaknesses. There's no point doing action that is out of a person's range. You may notice that Keanu doesn't do an awful lot of standing kicks in the movie. This was actually due to a spinal cord injury that he was still recovering from when shooting began. Clearly in the finished cut, these injuries are invisible. Wu Ping worked around them, restricting Keanu's movement and hiding it within the bounds of the scene. He understood that he only needed to make everything within the frame, for those few seconds, believable, and that the actors are only one piece of the puzzle. The angles of the fight, as well as how those angles are cut together, can drastically transform the finished product. Cuts can often be an easy way of hiding if your actors can't sell a more complex, complicated flurry of moves. And sometimes the actors can still do it, but for creative reasons, a lot of cuts are more favourable. This can have the effect of making a fight scene feel disorientating and aggressive in perhaps the same way the character might feel getting caught short. But by using wider angles and longer takes, it allows the finesse and detail of the choreography to stand for itself. Wu Ping designed each of the fights with the editing room in mind. I think that shaky cam style comes from American Studios' emphasis on coverage and leaving options in post. Typically, this is also done with three or more cameras, which means the fight is diluted because not all the cameras can be in the optimal position. I think that shaky camera style can be a storytelling device like in Saving Private Ryan, but it should not be used to hide poor performance or choreography. Wu Ping's work is always fully aware of the fact that we, the audience, want to see the full range of motion provided by two fighters. Disguising it often doesn't have the intended effect of creating movie magic with smoke and mirrors. It often muddies the sequence and leaves the viewer unsatisfied. A strike against the opponent is only satisfying if we can see the steps it took to get there. The punch is only impactful if we see the character throw it. That motion is key to building the pace of the scene. The only time an abundance of cuts are used in Wu Ping's work is when the hit needs to be emphasised as special in some way to the string of moves up to that point. It's also to help sell something that's a bit more outlandish. Notice how we hold on most of the kicks and punches here, but when it comes time for Morpheus to catch Neo's leg and spin him to the ground, we go from one unbroken combo in one continuous shot to one move told across four different shots including a close-up. Or here, we're allowed to see Neo fight Agent Smith uninterrupted by cuts, until... The cuts communicate which moves did more damage than others, helping the audience attain a sense of who is winning the fight. And you go from two people blocking and punching, fairly standard, to a guy smacking another guy across a room, outlandish, by using more cuts. And speaking of more outlandish moves... Wire Fu had yet to truly cross over into Hollywood, the heightened nature of such choreography was such a radical departure from the kind of fight scenes Western audiences were used to. But in many ways, The Matrix was the perfect film to merge Western narrative sensibilities with bombastic Hong Kong action. The story starts with Mr. Anderson living in a grey, drab world devoid of fantasy where he spends his day locked behind a screen pushing buttons with no passion or purpose. You know, the real world. After he's unplugged, the newly christened Neo returns to the world of the Matrix only for it to now be his sandbox. It has the same basic rules, rules like gravity. What you must learn is that these rules are no different than the rules of a computer system. Some of them can be bent, others can be broken. He can leap over buildings with a single bound. He can be faster than a speeding bullet. Essentially, he's Superman. Doing the Superman thing. In a pivotal training scene inside a simulation with Morpheus, the martial arts master shows Neo that his body is capable of much more than what quote-unquote real-world limitations can manage. Western audiences are sometimes quite preoccupied with the notion of realism. Often what constitutes realism is created by pop culture in the first place, and thus the very notion of realism in a movie is flawed from the start. I suggest you don't worry about this sort of thing and just enjoy yourself. That goes for you all too. 
by essentially taking the hero on a journey from an office space fight club-esque scenario of Neo hating his mundane office job to being in his very own Hong Kong action movie is a transition that feels earned because it plays to the audience's preconceived notions of what is and isn't realistic. Welcome to the desert of the real. Wu Ping's work on The Matrix ushered in an affinity for more bombastic, amped up fight scenes. Movies like Kill Bill really meshed with Wu Ping's style. The whole world of the film is so over the top and deliberately unrealistic, at one point even cutting to a fully animated sequence in an otherwise live action movie. As much as I'm not a fan of heavy shaky cam camera fight scenes and an over reliance on cuts, Jason Bourne probably wouldn't have worked very well with wire work. The Wachowskis worked together with Wu Ping on the Matrix sequels where his wire working choreography continued to flourish. And I think it showed a great amount of humility on the Wachowskis part to take a step back and say, we're not the best people to do the fights. They sought out a martial arts movie master instead. Good directors are also good managers, and the decision to bring in Wu Ping was an idea that paid in dividends. In turn, The Matrix proves that good action is no substitute for a good story. The reason why The Matrix has managed to endure in the public consciousness, where other action movies perhaps refined the fighting formula, is because The Matrix matches its spectacle with a mystery impossible to resist. Unfortunately, no one can be told what The Matrix is. Wu Ping isn't returning for the fourth currently untitled Matrix film, but stunt performers turned bona fide action directors Chad Stahelski and David Lech will be returning to choreograph. It will be interesting to see what kind of stance the action will take in Lana Wachowski's return to the Matrix universe. Chad Stahelski and David Lech went for a more grounded style of choreography with films like John Wick and their solo efforts like John Wick Chapter 2 and Atomic Blonde, straying away from any kind of Hong Kong inspired waifu. But of course, characters like John Wick live in a more grounded world, if you call it that. The characters of The Matrix are still super powered, so the opportunity to see Lana return to that more exaggerated spectacle is still up for grabs. At the same time, we might see Neo and Trinity ditch the wire work. Movie to movie, the depiction of larger than life abilities can change drastically, even if, from a story perspective, everyone is supposed to be around the same level of power and proficiency. Kylo Ren and Rey are meant to be just as strong in the Force as the heroes of the previous Star Wars films, but if you were to put them side by side, the depiction of those abilities in those fight scenes and how they fight is night and day different. If Neo no longer defies gravity, it would be a reflection of how action cinema has changed, rather than how the character's abilities have changed in that fictional world. Many years have passed since The Matrix, and action cinema has moved on in a variety of ways for better or for worse. So it will be interesting to see if the fourth movie ushers in a resurgence of waifu and Hong Kong inspired techniques, or whether it will skew more in line with Keanu's other action messiah. Like the original Matrix movie, will The Matrix revitalized go on to influence a whole new wave of action movies in the years following its release? If The Matrix reconsolidated does opt to give us more of this incredible waifu, as made popular in the West by Wu Ping himself, can we expect to suddenly see superheroes and spacemen leap across the room both fast and furiously? Only time will tell. And what of Wu Ping himself? He's expressed a desire to return to action comedy, the subgenre that kicked off his acclaim all those years ago with films like The Drunken Master. Here's to many, many, many more zero gravity kicks and punches to come. You can watch Wu Ping's work on not only the first Matrix film, but the entire trilogy, including The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions, on Prime Video now. And remember, there is no. Uh. There is no. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't important. <laughs>